Great. Thank you so much. Um, I have the honor to present today on behalf of over 120 scientists that participated in the uh, WHO Infodemiology Conference and also many more collaborators who are on managing the COVID-19 infodemic uh, through the WHO Information Network for Epidemics with support of the WHO uh, Secretariat. So I'd like to first start with discussing the infodemic and the challenges that it poses to us. So um, the infodemic has been high on the mind of member states since the very beginning of the pandemic. The Director General, Dr. Tedros, uh, declared already in February last year that we're battling an infodemic uh, alongside the pandemic. And member states have been concerned about how to manage it in the context of COVID-19 as well. It has consistently been raised in WHO and United Nations forums. Now, some think that the infodemic is only a problem of online misinformation. But really, experience has shown us that in times of an epidemic, we experience a surge of information and rumors, and this includes misinformation. And this happens in online and offline worlds. And in times of emergencies and uncertainty, when faced with this infodemic, it's harder for people to find reliable information that could then help them make informed decisions to enact behaviors that protect their health and their communities. And, you know, rumors are not new. We've experienced surges of rumors in outbreaks before. What we've learned is that its harmful impacts make it much harder to control the epidemic and manage epidemic risk. And we've learned that it doesn't only have a direct impact on health or cause confusion. Importantly, it, it also exacerbates mistrust in science, in health authorities, and in public health measures. And it has a wider societal impact, uh, such as on, on stigma and, and loosening of social cohesion. Now, what has made the COVID-19 infodemic such an unprecedented challenge is the fact that we're experiencing an epidemic in a digitized global society. And the challenge is a large one. Just last year, for example, over 200,000 preprints were published online on COVID-19. Rumors and information traveled across borders very quickly. And um, this has put a strain on not just how to communicate the evolving scientific knowledge, uh, but also enabling a more nibble pandemic response to the needs and concerns of communities. And it, it's really a global phenomenon, but to reduce its harmful effect on our ability to control the pandemic, we need everyone in. We need all parts of society to get involved, and we need to manage it across multiple levels and, and communities, from local to global. So what can we do about this? With this re realization, many have come together to think through how we can respond. Infodemic management is mm -hmm. an innovation that has coalesced a variety of activities mm -hmm. into a framework approach to improve so pandemic communication and evaluate impact of infodemic management interventions. We know that countering the infodemic needs to be based on science and the principle, on the principle of doing no harm. The science of, of inf infodemiology underpins the commitment to evaluation and delivery of impact. This will help us to better manage this pandemic, but also more quickly tackle new and resurgent health threats in the future. Now, this is, is a simple model that has been used to describe how information and misinformation is spread between people online and offline. And it assumes that information passes in a linear fashion through our communication and information system. But the reality looks more like this. Uh, this was looking at a network of people using Facebook and how they are expressing their views on vaccination. The blue ones are those that are promoting vaccination. The red ones hold anti-vax views. And the large majority are the people in green. 
The green ones are the undecided ones. What this shows is that we live in information bubbles. We can see here that the pro-vaccination blue community is detached from the rest of online conversation and is mainly talking to each other. But the anti-vax community is a lot more intertwined and connected with those people who are questioning or are undecided regarding vaccines. And make no mistake here, what is talked about online often affects what newsrooms and radio pick up further. The news and information nowadays travels internationally and can affect even what reaches those who are not using social media. So there is really a need to use a variety of methods for more real-time social listening complemented with localized context. And this is just an illustration that we need to think about our information ecosystem, the online and offline, how it can be used to better, uh, better in infodemic management to support the management of the epidemic and epidemic risk. And to do this, we need more research. Take the recent example um, of the epidemic evolution in India, where we know that the drivers of the current epidemic wave were mass gatherings where people did not enact health behaviors. We know from the past example that I showed uh, regarding Facebook and others that just pushing messages out into the information ecosystem is not enough. It doesn't drive behavior change. And we need to know how to act within that information system. We also need to know how we characterize it, how to identify where interventions should be targeted for highest public health impact. We need to know um, how to make sure that we put capacities and systems in place so that we can use um, a pre-prepared -pre infodemic management toolbox to, to respond. And starting June last year, through the fall, over 120 scientists were convened uh, under the leadership of the WHO Secretariat to advance the field of infodemiology. Now, infodemiology is a science for some 10 years, but what we recognized was that to tackle the online and offline infodemic and its harm on public health, we need to use the knowledge from more scientific disciplines, which we've learned do not normally publish together or exchange perspectives. You see on this drawing here, in addition to, to the usual fields of risk communication, pu public health, uh, we need to really expand um, uh, collaborations with uh, digital health, with um, user experience, with some media studies, um, complexity science, computational uh, sciences. And really, um, this is not just a matter of messaging but also the way that online information ecosystem works and promotes emotive and divisive content instead of factual information. Uh, it's also a matter of people's self-efficacy to understand how to evaluate and choose what to do with the information that they do receive. And our second starting point was also that it's urgent to point the research towards practice, towards building evidence-based interventions. And, and systems. So the discussions at the committee, the research agenda frame, which is shown here, and it is framing the questions to basically inform infodemic management interventions, much in a similar fashion as epidemiology would inform epidemic management. So we move here from measuring and monitoring, then to detecting and understanding the infodemic, so that then we can respond and deploy interventions. And uh, the big piece of work is also how to strengthen the resilience to the infodemic. Uh, the last point, the fifth one, um, we also need to enable infodemic management by understanding transferability of interventions and by understanding how to build systems and integrate, uh, integrate it with the health system response. The Secretariat supported us in uh, going through a research question generation and prioritization exercise, and I show the process here. In, in the end, the expert judgment resulted in 49 research questions that are feasible in shorter term and would have high impact 
on public health. And here are some top questions from the 49. As you can see, the emphasis on the connection of online and offline behavior, how the infodemic can affect health service uptake and vulnerable populations and closed groups. And, and then there's a piece also related to better understanding how to mitigate health misinformation and what policies have a role to play there. So the full set of questions was published by the Secretariat as a WHO public health research agenda for managing um, infodemic. But, you know, so what happened after the conference? Five scientific journals came together with a call for papers to tackle, tackle aspects of this research agenda. And special issues will be coming out throughout the year. Two of them actually have come out with papers already. And in addition to that, the Journal of Medical Internet Research just established a new JMIR infodemiology journal. And this has just advertised its first call for papers. Um, we're also already filling in knowledge gaps, targeted closer to what we need to expand evidence-based infodemic management. I put here as an example three papers and a report uh, to just in concluded fourth WHO infodemic management conference, but I don't have the time to discuss them in detail. Um, just a couple of highlights, you know, we're learning about the importance of proactive strategies such as pre-bunking and social inoculation in raising um, uh, resilience to mis uh, misinformation and infodemic. We're also learning how to show an action and misinformation and how it skips online platforms and into physical world uh, and by building models of the information ecosystem. So, for example, research has shown that the decisive enablers of COVID-19 anti-vaccination opinions are small communities that were previously not even detected as the important mediators of influence uh, online such as alternative health community who are linked to parenting communities. And um, in addition to developing the science behind infodemic management, a lot of activity has been taking place also in developing curricula and training infodemic managers to respond better. Uh, WHO's second infodemic manager training is taking place in June, and there are plans by partners to establish a field infodemic manager training program. Uh, this is actually modeled on the field epidemiology trainings. And several universities are also developing courses and programs in infodemiology. Now, we've also learned that we need to listen to communities and to the society at scale and through different methods. Most of the information that is circulating about doubt and questions. So we need systematic approaches to understand these conversations and also approaches um, that, um, to inform then approaches that reduce harm from mis and disinformation. And social listening methods through um, uh, surveys such as knowledge um, practices and attitude surveys are important tool, but they also have some shortcomings. By the time results of these surveys are available, people's concerns may have shifted onwards, and with a delayed response to provide relevant and timely information, there is more opportunity for misinformation to fill the conversation space. So WHO has developed a pilot of an online social listening platform that helps to do real-time horizon scanning for possible topics of concern in countries. What the platform does is implement social listening at scale and uses artificial intelligence methods to help decision makers identify what topics of conversations and questions and narratives are at the start of gaining traction in their communities. Now, this helps to proactively understand what are questions people are not getting answers to and what are the concerns and needs that they are expressing and that are not being met. And these can then be picked up for a deeper dive analysis in an integrated way with other information at local level um, uh, and also from communities. So this helps to prioritize not just risk communication activities, but it can also feed community feedback into the wider health system response to the 
um, uh, pandemic. But really going forward, as all these activities get built up, we need to look at the policy level as well. I'm showing here the results of the WHO Pulse Survey on continuity of essential health services. And this was uh, conducted during the first quarter of this year. Um, they show that countries are organizing themselves to tackle the infodemic. And really, just as an illustration, the US CDC has established an infodemic response uh, unit as well. And just in the last week, ahead of the World Health Assembly, two external evaluation reports of WHO and the COVID-19 response have also highlighted the importance of infodemic management in managing the pandemic and, and epidemic risk. And really encouraging has also been the decision to establish a WHO pandemic intelligence hub with support of Germany, recognizing that we need to put emphasis on building practices that provide more real-time insights to inform policymaking. Not only um, do we need to support innovation for health information and risk modeling, this initiative also recognizes that effectiveness of control measures is linked also to their acceptance, and this in part can be addressed through infodemic management and more effective uh, interventions um, uh, there. So really, our job going forward is to build tools and capacities for infodemic management that can be scaled up as needed in the next emergency and also in other public health contexts and really rapidly develop the, the field of infodemiology to inform uh, a new evidence-based uh, toolbox, so to speak. So trust and community resilience are key to success of many public health programs and the tools we're building can be transferred and adapted to other infectious diseases. I'm thinking here in context of One Health of food safety, antimicrobial resistance, climate change and health, as well as non-communicable diseases and health promotion activities. So this science really, uh, although in its infancy, can really be applied uh, to, to tools uh, in use of public health in, in uh, many, uh, not just in the immediate needs of uh, what we're developing now. So. In conclusion, um, I'd like to acknowledge all the participants of the Infodemiology Conference and all other collaborators in the WHO Info Information Networks for Epidemics, uh, sorry, for epidemics who have worked with the Secretariat to advance this field. And uh, thank you very much for, for giving me the floor.